peace when, within oneself and then peace with our surrounding, which is the families, the peers, and also peace with our environment. Furthermore, we encourage youth to really transform these peace projects in their communities and to really foster and to really um, encourage also other youth to volunteer in the communities through sports programs, to service projects, cleanup programs. And here I want to show two of our chapters. This is one by SP Balkan, which um, over the last two years has educated 169 peace designers and also they completed four peace projects in um, North Macedonia and Kosovo. And four projects are also on the way to be completed by May, 2025. Thank you, Marlise. So I've been informed that we have still some time uh, if uh, we would like to have some questions and answers. Uh, we have here uh, the contact details uh, of all of our speakers today. So please don't hesitate to um, contact them if you would have want to have more conversation uh, or information. Um, and I would like to make a picture of the panel. So much, wow, this is such an exception. Great. Um, so how are we doing on the picture, first of all? Thank you. Okay, let's have a seat again. So thank you so much. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank again all our panelists for their contributions. Very valuable and very diverse. Thank you so much. And um, I saw a question, sir. All right. Uh, good afternoon. Marcos Williams is my name from Nigeria. And um, while uh, the man from uh, that Lebanon or Israel was uh, making his presentation. I was moved to tears. And that was because of uh, my early days. I saw my life well replicated in what I saw there. And uh, my question is this, these young people, um, how do they get involved in the volunteerism when in the real sense of reality, they don't have resources to sustain themselves while they are volunteering, uh, volunteering because in Nigeria, that is a critical problem. We want them to be involved. We plan for them, but we don't support them to be involved. And that becomes uh, an extinguishing factor. I, I love the aspect of education where their brain is developed. And I have a question around that. You mentioned something I think I needed to just, I, I didn't get it quite right, but I will read it out what I have here. You said something about, uh, when you introduce romantic issues to children in their period of growth, it is not very ideal. I really don't understand that because um, these are the things we see these days. We have children grow around the uh, communities, uh, parental upbringing, and they see pictures, more pictures that speaks than the instruction in the school that we give to them. Uh, I recall like, a certain uh, a teacher came many years back to train us on child protection in Nigeria. And he finished training us. And in the evening, I saw a different person who trained us on how to protect people. And I was asking questions. The teaching is different from the uh, practice. So how do we navigate around this to get these young people, to get the education? Then the woman from Kenya, beautiful presentation. How do we harness this and make it more easy to uh, 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 implement in a place like Lebanon? right now in a place like uh, uh, Palestinian communities right now? How, how do we get this to happen? There is a need for us to uh, re review approaches globally as we respond. And um, uh, you mentioned something, you talked about not uh, um, enforcement, but engagement. And I think uh, crime and its uh, entirety is connected to uh, uh, engagement because for it to be conducted there's an engagement for it to stop its approach then there must be an engagement because if we try to enforce we can raise so many that are really not very necessary thank you thank you sir you mentioned quite some points um which one would you prefer to be questioned uh, i heard a question about the brain development 
but and also some general questions. So could you please prioritize who, what question you would like to ask to whom? Okay, so yes. the, the brain development is very pivotal, mm -hmm. but the one for engagement is a recommendation. Okay, thank you so much. Mrs. De Tomasini, could you please answer the question on brain development and sexual engagement? Yeah, sure. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Um, well, as you said, it's not easy because um, we have um, a sexualized culture in general in the world, not in Lebanon or Nigeria only, but everywhere. But we're, we're here um, explaining how, excuse me, <laughs> how important the family is, you know, to be a safe place for their children. And when we talk about nurture in the household, I'm sorry, it's something, <laughs> something maybe. Oh, thank you. <laughs> something in the air, right? Excuse me. Okay, so. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> what i recommend is that at home we have to be clear we have to be clear about our values we have to tell them the value of their body the value of love the mm -hmm. value of the relationships right we have to take time for them play with our children they have to feel how a person that really and truly loves them, how's that love, you know? So they don't go anywhere else looking for love. And they know, you know, um, we say that um, family is the first school of love. And it's the first school of sexuality as well. Because what people understand about sexuality is all genital, but sex sexuality is not genital. Sexuality is relationships. Right, so we need to learn when we are in, in our household how to relate vertically to our people, our father, the same same sex, you know, relationship with an adult that respects you and that loves you more than himself, right? And then do your same sex vertical figure, right? So you know how it is to to relate to vertical to people in vertical positions or older than you of your same sex and other sex right and you need to know the boundaries and you need to know all of that and same for for horizontal you need to learn how to relate to people horizontally to to um brothers and sisters you know your same sex and other sex so you learn how to how uh, how to relate to other to other people from the same sex or other sex with within boundaries and values and respect, right? Um, so uh, in school they learn the genitals, you know, in in science class or whatever. That's okay. It's part of them. They need to learn to to you know how their bodies um, work, you know. But it, at home we tell them. You this you don't touch here, you don't touch there, you don't look here, you don't look there, right? Because the time will come for that when they are ready, you know, in all of their being. Because we are if you if you steal like with your hand like this, you're not looking, but you're stealing in your back. You know you're stealing, right? Because you're a whole, right? So so um sexuality is a whole too. Right. So it's not something that you use your genitals and that's it. Right. It involves the whole person. That means that the whole person has to be ready for that, for whatever you're engaging in. So in order to overcome all of the challenges that we have, we need to to do the three T's time, touch, talk within the boundaries of principles. We need to take time and play with our children and talk to them and read books together. They in This morning, I was so happy when I was coming here in the train because the, a lady comes with a stroller and the baby had two books. He didn't have a, a, an electronic device, you know? The baby had two books. And I, I really felt like congratulating her 
because we really have to go back. You know, books are beautiful, are amazing. And they really carved into your, your and it's a very, an, an excellent source and way to, to teach values, you know? So, um, yeah, I think we, we need to really invest ourselves at home with our children, you know, and tell them the things um, clearly to their, to, so, so they can take care of themselves, right? I don't know if that um, answers your question, can sir. A, can I give a super short response? Yes. So, um, so the students who I, who I showed, um, they're based in Israel and their greatest need right now is emotional um, comfort and empathy. But we also have some students who participate in the writing program from Gaza um, and they're facing all kinds of immediate physical needs um, displaced from their homes. A lot of them, their homes are destroyed. And those are all issues. I haven't been able to, help, to solve those. Those problems still exist. But um, quick shout out, we have a book on Amazon. So we published a book with writing from the students. And for a teen in Gaza to know that his work has been published and people are reading it, it, it gives them some small personal comfort, which is also a huge need because there's high rates of depression um, and and loss of hope, which can impact your resilience as well. Thank you, Mr. Ayello, for also uh, partially um, answering the second question. I hope that's sufficient uh, for now. Thank you so much for, uh, for asking the question. And I see a question here. Please introduce yourself and to whom the question is addressed. Hello, um, good afternoon to everyone. My name is Cassandra um, from Mexico, uh, an NGO preventing human trafficking. And my question go to Malis. Um, it is actually related to the question that was um, done before. And I mean, what kind of profile of the young people who attend your, which is the profile of the young people that attend your peace program? Maybe from my ignorance, um, I will assume that they are young people who have demonstrated leadership skills of kind of an initiative. But um, if you have any recommendations to approach young people that may be involved in difficult or violent situations, you know, that they may um, to not demonstrate this type of skills and that they may be shifting away or into this violent context, like how do you approach them or make them be interested in these type of programs? Thank you. Thank you very much for your question. And mostly we are working with students, but also like with people that we engage like with different communities on a local level. So we really try to bring like, and also encourage them to bring friends. They might know that they need help or someone. And really we try then, of course, they are creating their own peace projects and then they know exactly what is the issue in their community. So they can really address then this issue, for example, if they know there's really a lot of crime happening there and then really try to um, engage with like professionals, mentors who really then try to bring like them, of course, and then when they can encourage them, I think it's in general, like as I mentioned, then when they can see there's hope and they can also be engaged and like heard by others, I really believe that they can. And we can also see many projects and that are already realized or even like they can feel like now I'm empowered. I have, I can talk to someone and now I'm safe basically. And I really feel like it's really based also on the safety that they can feel they have a space where they can share openly. So I think this is really important. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Uh, maybe one last question, sir. Uh, <clears throat> my name is uh, Khaled, uh, director of Health Afghan School Children Organization, Pasco Uyanabes. As we all know the crucial uh, effect of education and preventing uh, crime and drug. Exactly for this purpose, Hasco was created in 2002 in Vienna. During the last two decades, we educated thousands of Afghan uh, children. We explained about the negative effect of drug on crime on uh, every society. Thanks to you, we are now Women's Society for uh, is, uh, support in 2008. But, but unfortunately, unfortunately, during the last three years, not only 
more than millions of Afghan girls and women prevented from their basic life, uh, basic right of education, but also a non-government organization working in this direction, uh, the, the government uh, uh, role of Afghanistan, present role of Afghanistan, creating different obstacle on the way of uh, non-government organi uh, organization. For this, uh, this reason, HASCO uh, activity is postponed in the last three years. My last request to all of you, please do not forget Afghan girl and woman. Afghan girl and woman need your support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, herewith, I would like to conclude our uh, side event. Thank you so much for all of your contributions and interventions. And I would to really thank our all of our panelists and this ongoing support of uh, the Philippines. Thank you so much for being here, Your Excellency. And all of our speakers, thank you so much. And also the UNODC for your support. And um, yes, let, like I said, uh, please uh, don't hesitate to contact our um, speakers. Yeah, thank you very much. I also wish to, <clears throat> to add something. I have grandchildren, children and grandchildren in different ages. And the most important thing is to, to teach them what is fair and what is not fair. Yeah, so to share how much April have one, <laughs> how much April have others, and how much they let, let them think themselves that they are satisfied and they are happy with the apples, with the pears, and when it's not enough, we go to the garden and they can look for something nice. So nobody will be empty. The nature, I live on countryside and the nature is so rich. And children can discover and they come, oh, what is the flower? Or for example, my grandchild, I was working in the garden and he uh, asked me, what are you doing there, grandmother? And I said, I am taking out uh, yeah, weeds, yeah? And he said, <clears throat> does exist weeds? And I said, yeah, this is right. They are all plants, but in the middle of these plants are the carrots. I put it inside and I wish these carrots, they are growing a little bit slower than the other. So I need to put out the other weeds that my carrots can grow and then we can make some soup or something on the table, bring to the table. So he was looking and he said, okay, grandmother, I will help you. <laughs> then, so this is like education or somehow making connection. Mrs. Uh, Dr. Tomasini was talking so much about this, how to uh, open their eyes of the connection. So thank you very much. Everybody it was very nice to meet you here. Thank you. Thank you thank so you, much. Mama, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Here would we conclude. Thank you so much. So thank you so much. Thank you very much for the I have a Thank you.